All right, it says going live, going live. That's what it does, by the way, guys. When I'm starting to go live, there's this little circle and it says going live, but looks like I'm on. How's it going, guys? Happy Black Friday. Do we want to celebrate Black Friday? I went into one store today and I was thinking about buying a pistol and it was so ridiculous that I waited for like an hour and they were just getting ready to finish checking out the guy that was at the counter when I got there and there was a list. So I laughed. So <laughs> not so happy Black Friday, but I hope you guys all had a great Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, like I said, you know, in my video I put out, I'm happy for a lot of things, guys. I'm happy for my family, first and foremost, my good friends. Happy that we're in the United States of America. And for those of you that aren't, sorry about that, but most of my guys are American viewers, and you guys know what I'm talking about, where as of right now, who knows how much longer, but we can still sit here and talk about guns amongst friends and buddies. And, yeah, I'm really thankful for that, the freedom of the right to keep and bear arms given to us by God and upheld in our Bill of Rights that strictly prohibits the government from even daring to not only take it away from us, of course they can't do that, but they're not even allowed to tread on it. They're not even allowed to infringe. So I'm really, really thankful. And I'm also thankful for all of you guys, you know, people I can hang out with. I um, never guessed doing this little channel here that I'd meet so many good people and cool people. And yeah, I have a lot of fun, guys. I really do. So Thankful for you all and happy to be with you guys today. Let's see who's in here tonight. Mateo, what's happening, Mateo? By the way, I don't thank Mateo enough, but I appreciate you being my moderator, man. It's a it's a thankless job. I, I'd show you guys how much I pay him to do it, but well, here's how much I pay him to do it. So thanks for being my moderator, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, Paul Gonzi, he says, have my cigar ready. Let's go. Fire it up, man. We're on, Paul. Explicit. Okay, so I started off by asking a question. So when I first opened this stream window up, the chat shows up. And there was this big message that I had to like click OK to, and it said, your channel now has super stickers enabled. I don't know what a super sticker is. If any of you guys know, let me know. Kind of sounds like it's for kids maybe, but I had to check the box, the new YouTube policy, that said this video is not made for kids. So there you go. Although I do try to keep this family friendly. So per YouTube policy... This channel is not for kids because I'm not going to comply with COPPA and I just simply opt out and say it's not for kids. But if you guys have young ones, you know, have them come in and watch the stream. I try to keep it as family friendly as I can, you know. So I love kids. I just had to tell YouTube it's not for kids and you creators know what I'm talking about. There's all these new YouTube COPPA rules. Some people say it's the end of the world as we know it. I don't think so. I think they're just... YouTube got in a bunch of trouble by the federal government for violating COPPA, the Children's Online Protection Act. I used to work at a school in the IT department, so I actually know a little bit about it. And according to the federal government, COPPA is a big deal. So enough of that. I just figured I'd tell you guys that's what a lot of the hubbub is about with content creators that are kind of freaking out. I just said, look, none of my stuff's made for kids, but all of your kids are invited. And I encourage all of you to get your kids into firearms at a young age. Safety, 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 and get them where they understand that guns are good things for good people. And they're not going to fall into the hype at school that these are bad things, that these inanimate objects make you a bad person. So I'm all for kids getting into guns at a young age. I talk to my very young daughter a lot about the safe handling and good guy, good guy and girl uses of firearms. I think a lot of you guys do the same thing probably, right? So back to what I was saying, explicit. Well, I was asking guys, what's a super sticker? He says, I think I stepped in those once and had to throw away my socks. So <laughs> it does sound like something you'd step in, doesn't it? Thanks for the laugh, explicit. Poor conservative. He'll be in and out. Well, glad to have you here as long as you can, man. Chuck Kaplan. What's happening, Chuck? How you doing, man? Um, Let's see here. Whole Foods Market. How's it going, Whole Foods? <laughs> nice to see you. I don't really shop at Whole Foods, but hey, man, it's all good. Can't afford to shop at Whole Foods. I could buy more guns or shop at Whole Foods. Instead, we grow a lot of stuff from the garden, right? Which is Whole Food. Jet001. What's happening, Jet? How you doing, man? Another good channel. Jet001. Driving around in his Jeep earlier in the snow. Thank God there's no snow here, but 
Jack was jeeping it up earlier today. I saw in my YouTube feed. Uh, Beretta Man. Beretta Man 2A Defender. Nice, nice. I'm liking the name, man. Beretta Man, another one of my buddies. You guys are all my buddies, okay? Dog Dad, come on, man. You're too much. Super chat from Dog Dad. That's awesome, dude. Thank you so, so much. Anybody that has dogs, you want your dog to eat healthier, eat a little more naturally like it should, go over to Dog Dad. He has his own website, YouTube channel. You can get to him from YouTube from here, but he has his own site, teaches classes, courses, help really help you with your dog. I don't have a dog, but I was just watching part of one of his live streams the other day. After the fact, I was listening to it as a podcast, and I was kind of interested, and I own pygmy goats for pets, so yeah. RJL, how's it going, man? You have a great site. Thanks, man. Maybe he was talking about Dog Dad. Dog Dad is, has a great site. Me, I don't know. I'm just a dude hanging out with you guys, but thanks, RJ. Edward Kent, what's happening, Edward? How you doing, man? David Rivera, what's happening? He says he loves the channel. Thanks a lot, man. That's all I'm doing, guys, on here is just trying to hang out. If I can teach you something, that's awesome. Many of you guys know more than me, but every once in a while, I might teach even some of you experts something. And if you're new to guns, I'm all about that too. So, heck yeah. Always good to have people learning stuff. Raphael Davis. How you doing, Raphael? What's happening, man? Nice to see you. Scott Gaines. Hey, Scott. Good to see you too. Just taking a real quick look here. Who needs to eat, Barada Man says. I don't know. I'll be honest, guys. I kind of forgoed my dinner just to hang out with you guys. I was out working until dark today. Attempted to do some Black Friday shopping. Yeah, not so much. I left, got back here, ran some of my equipment into the back shop, and then just jumped right on here. So, um, Tree Guy, what's happening, Tree Guy? He says, hopping to say hello and happy Thanksgiving, hopping back off and spend time with the family. See you all. Sorry I can't stick around. Well, thanks for coming on in and saying hi to us, Tree Guy. Tree Guy is one of my longtime viewers and Means a lot to me, man. Happy Thanksgiving to you too, buddy. Uh, Big Mo, he says, did you talk about the holster yet? Am I late? Dude, you're like two minutes late, so you're not late at all. I'm just saying hi to everybody. That's kind of why I do these is to hang out with you guys. So it might be a little boring at first in these streams because I'm going through, but I'm not really just doing this as a formality. Like I actually want to say hi to you people and see who's all in here and say what's up, you know? So nope, the holster's right here. I'm going to talk about it in like, couple minutes unless you guys keep saying hi to me then we'll say hi all night which is just fine with me too really uh joseph gonzalez newbie from central florida watch a, watch a lot of very informative thanks man i'm all about the new gun guy i really am and i've got some kind of high level geekery stuff too like there's an ak video i just recorded that's kind of, of a rare variant not many people have seen so there's kind of stuff here for the nerds and the geeks that are really into the intricacies but I also feel that this is what's happened on YouTube, guys. This is just what I feel. And it's nothing against anybody else's channel because there's many channels that are awesome. I subscribe to like a lot, right? And many slash most are better than mine. But here's what I've kind of noticed. If you go on to GunTube, the gun YouTube channels like five, six, seven, eight years ago, people were getting into the introduction stuff. Like here's your slide. Here's the components of your slide. Here's your extractor. Here's your ejector. Here's what you could expect on the inside of a new pistol, right? I've been doing videos like that lately because everyone did those videos like seven, eight years ago. And now when they do their videos, they just assume that everybody already knew all this and they're just going right into like the finer points of the gun. And I said, well, hold on a minute. I was talking to some new, you know, firearms owners and saying, hey, you know, just YouTube it. That's kind of the answer everyone gives. Go look it up on YouTube. And they're like, man, people are showing the guns. It looks like they're all trying to sell it to me because a lot of gun channels have. And I don't blame them. I believe in capitalism. They, they're sponsored and they get paid money to do their videos. I'm not sponsored by any gun manufacturers, by the way, guys. And they're kind of leaving out a lot of the one-on-one stuff. So I've been going back and trying to do some of that kind of ground level stuff, get people off on the right track. Do you guys like that? I just feel, and I'm not saying I haven't figured out, but I feel like there's a big gap in there where not really many people are doing those kind of videos quite so much anymore. And that's what I like to do because I love seeing people in the comments saying, hey, man, first gun, I'm so glad I found your channel because you were showing me some compare and contrast, right, between like the G2C or the G3. And 
you know, that's that's basically it. Um, let's see here. Okay, Raphael Davis has got to go back to work too. Looks like a lot of people are working tonight, but that's cool. I'm so glad you guys came in here and um just said hi at least. That's awesome. That's awesome. It looks like so many people are busy tonight, but hey. Uh, Jeremy Wilson, what's happening, Jeremy? How you doing, man? Uh, Gamer Goat 007, what's up? What's happening, man? Um, Jose Pizarro, he says, I was on the fence about buying my G2C even with all the good reviews out there. Came across your channel, next thing you know, made the G2C, my new EDC, and now just about ready to order my G3. That's awesome, man. You know, I hope you really like both of those guns. My G2C, it's right here, okay? Really, really liking this pistol. I'm due to do another update video on this soon, guys, just to let everyone know that I've put quite a few rounds through this. It's still just ticking along like a clock. No problems, guys. So I'm going to do a little follow-up video soon because people are probably wondering, like, man, did he just have initial luck with this? No. When I keep saying to you guys in the comments, loving my G2C, Still loving it, still going strong. So, yeah. You know what, Paul? That's a good idea. AK-101. Right on, man. Right on. I just recorded an AK video that's kind of like the intro to one of the countries of origins of AK. But, yeah, I think that is cool. I'm a huge AK guy, so you don't really have to twist my arm too much. And check this out. Just so you guys know, throughout this stream, any suggestions, like Paul just said, I'm totally looking for that. I totally want to be doing stuff that's fun for everybody. So look what I have here. A blank sheet of paper and a pen. I'm writing AK 101 video down right here. All right. There's the first thing on my list. Anyone else has any more suggestions? Throw them in here. If I get talking too much and I don't read it out loud, I go back and watch these later. So there we go. Paul just added something to the list. Now there's already a list, guys, but I'm looking for more and more things to add on. Because I'd rather just kind of do what you guys want to do and just hang out rather than, look, I've got nothing to sell you guys. None of these guys are giving me any of the guns. So there you go. Um, Jeremy Wilson's doing good. Good. Horror Conservatives carrying his EDC, which is a tracker right now. All right. Real quick here, the holster. Because some guys came in here just for that. That's the title of the video. So the Taurus G3s come out. Right away, people are saying, hey, man, do you know of a good holster? You know of a good holster. Well, I don't want to just go on Amazon and look for something with five stars and be like, hey, you know, just buy this from Amazon. Like, you can do that if you want, but that's kind of boring. So I actually went out and looked, and I basically went and looked for a local company, okay? I like to shop local or small businesses, right? So I found a business that's a small business, a small outfit that makes holsters by hand, pays attention to detail, and I actually sought this company out. They didn't come to me and say, hey, man, will you sell our product for us? Not at all. Like That's the complete opposite of this channel, actually. So I found a nice holster, but hold on a minute. I just got distracted. I think I just saw a super sticker. Actually, these super stickers are pretty freaking cool. Thanks, Chuck Kaplan. That's awesome, man. You guys see that? There's a little... There's a little green bird. He kind of goes, did I do a good imitation? Hold on. Wow, he's doing it better than me. But, yeah, that's a super sticker. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. I really appreciate it, man. $3 well spent. It does help support the channel, and it really, really made me laugh, okay? It really did. <laughs> All right. We're going to talk about this holster. But, Dog Dad, great idea. I'm going to write that down right now. Sighting and a pistol. With three dot sights. All right. Good idea. Thanks, man. Jeremy Wilson, he's got my back. I, I paid Jeremy Wilson to say that just so you guys know. He says that was perfect. Eugene Stoner's in the house. Jeez, oh, Pete's. I'll grab, I'll grab one of your rifles in a minute, sir. I, I have I have a stoner back here that I can show Mr. Eugene himself. <laughs> uh, what an honor. We Now we need Mikhail Kalashnikov to come in here, okay? Big Mo. Nice. Big Mo is this guy that's going bump, first, bump. What do you guys think? 
So if someone's out there like, dude, just show me the freaking holster, all right? I'm, I'm going to show you guys the holster. But for those of you that this is your first time, I like to hang out on here and have fun. So we're going to focus on having fun, and I'll also show you guys as much cool gun and holster-related stuff as possible. Oh, it says fist bump. Thank you, Beretta, man. See, this is awesome. Like, in a lot of my videos, and someone just said this yesterday, I'm kind of known for dropping ammo so you guys can laugh at me. That's awesome. Apparently, I can't read, so you guys can laugh at me for not being able to tell the difference between fist and first. <coughs> yeah, that does say fist. Keep in mind, guys, the way I'm streaming this in the um, studio, YouTube studio, the picture is like this big, and there's this little thing on the side, so... There we go. Uh, you guys can laugh at me if you want. Trust me. It's all good. That's that's why I'm here, to provide you a little entertainment, even if it's at my expense. What's happening, Gun Squawk 44? Jorge Vargas, what's happening, man? Uh, Captain Kate McNilton, how's it going? Happy to be here. I'm happy you're here, too. Hey, I'm friendly to everybody on here. I'm just trying to have a good time, so... Um, Big Mo says, I know you're not a gun or product salesman, so hope it helps. It does help. I really appreciate it. I'm not a salesman at all. Sometimes I'll reach out to somebody and say, I'm interested in your product. And they'll say, well, here you go. You can have one to test. But that's like on a really, really small scale, like bloody, bloody wheels with his grip spacers. He donated some to the channel. I actually gave away three quarters of them to you guys. Little stuff like that. But these have to be products I already know about ahead of time that I'm looking to do reviews on, not the other way around. If Bloody Wheels had contacted me, for example, and we've become good friends, you know, since. He basically, if he would have said, hey, man, I'll send you some of these and I'll write you a $100 check. Now, he wouldn't do that. This is just an example. I would have told him no because I've got these, you know, Companies from import companies, you know, the Chinese basically that make all the cheap stuff on Amazon. They're emailing me 10 times a day. Will you review our product? Will you do this? We, I don't even read them to be honest. So yeah, if I like your product and I like it a lot and you donated to the channel, that's cool. If you give me a bag full of stuff like Bloody Wheels did, I'm going to give most of it away. So there you guys go. But no sponsorships. No one's sending me money. I mean, I do actually... Uh, Big Mo has helped sponsor the channel tonight. Dog Dad, Chuck Kaplan. There's my sponsors, guys. So, um, Did I get my Gallant back yet? No, I did not. I did a follow-up, though, okay? And in the follow-up, I was basically saying when they get them in stock. Well, Clint has been staying on top of this. He's been messaging me almost every day just to be like, hey, man, just hang in there. They were all out. Classics all out of the Gallants, like what I got. So I kind of need to wait for them to get more from JRA. And when they do, they're going to really look mine over and make sure. And they're going to start looking all of them over a lot better is what I was told. So there you go. No Gallant yet. I just have to wait. They were out of stock. So, yeah. I want to talk about this holster, guys. And I am. I really, really am. But these streams tend to last an hour or two. So we'll get to it. Um, yeah, like Beretta man said, we're a very friendly group. You know, we're into guns. If you're into guns, this is probably where you want to be. You don't have to be into guns to hang out here. If you're against guns, it probably won't be very much fun because we're not going to join in. I'm not saying you are, um, Kate, but just anybody. You can hang out if you're not. If you want to sit there and disrupt them, we'll ignore you. That's all it is. No, nobody's mean to anybody on here that I've ever noticed. Okay, um, Captain Kate McM uh, McMilton has a scenario. You're sitting in your kitchen having food, and 14 guys breaking with machine guns. What do you do? I would be stuck. Well, yeah, if 14 guys literally bust down the door with machine guns or any kind of gun, let's face it. To be honest, when you're breaking down a door and you're from here to the other side of the room away, I don't know that the machine gun makes it much more effective. Maybe you could be more dead faster, but... Any type of guns like that, just across the room or across the inside of a house, you're in big trouble. Hopefully you said your prayers earlier that day and you're going to be good. You know, you're going to be good with your creator. I mean, to be quite honest with you, in that exact scenario. So the only people I can think of, though, that would bust down a guy's door and shoot his dog with 14 machine guns would probably be the government, quite frankly. 
in this country. There's not too many robes of gangs. I mean, you hear the cartel does that in Mexico, in some other countries, right? But, yeah, you're totally screwed. I, I do always have a gun close. That's absolutely true. Yep. And you know why? Because there's going to be 999,000 scenarios, right, where there's one person up to no good, one, two, or three, maybe even four. I am prepared to deal with that at all times. 14 people, point blank range with machine guns. No, I, I'm, I'm gone. And like you said, the government's probably about the only people that really actually do that. I'm not saying they do it all the time, but think, you know, Ruby Ridge and stuff like that, right? It has happened. Matt Morrison, what's happening, Matt? How you doing, man? Eugene Stoner, five bucks. That's awesome, dude. Thank you so much. And I am, I'm going to get to this in a little bit. I am excited, guys, to do this G2C project. I've had a few new Patreon supporters that have come in. You guys are awesome. I Unless there's been somebody coming in the last hour, I've sent you guys personal thank you notes. And another thing I'm doing, too, let me know what you guys think. For Patreon um, supporters, look, I have, like, way more than I probably deserve, and you guys are awesome. But I don't have a million Patreon supporters, Okay. If I ever get like a lot, I'd love to do like a monthly giveaway of something nice. But for now, I think it helps out the channel and gives you guys more back if I can just put the money into the channel, right, to have more quality videos. I still don't mind pitching in my own money, but I just can't afford to do everything I'd like to do, right? So we're going to have more content. And But what I am doing is I thought I'd do something that's a little bit fun. And for you Patreon supporters, you probably got this about an hour before the stream started. I just did a small little like two-minute uh, vlog, I guess is the new phrase for that. You know, I was over there in the shop just about 10 feet from here, just showing you guys a little sneak preview of a, of a gun that I'm going to be reviewing soon and just kind of showing you guys a couple other guns that was laid out. Let me know what you guys think of that. Just like kind of a little bit of hanging out behind the scenes, maybe a video once a week of that, just to like be cool and hang out with the Patreon guys. And then what I've been doing the last couple weeks is putting out a few videos ahead of time where it's going to be my YouTube video, but the Patreon supporters see it just a little bit ahead of time. Trust me, guys, I'm not going to do full content that you have to pay for. Any video that I'm giving to my Patreon supporters for a preview, it's going to go up on my main channel. Besides like these little two minute vlogs that I thought might be kind of just a little bit fun. So let me know what you guys think. Um, let's see here. Thanks, Jeremy. I, I like it to be a good place to be, you know. Okay, Captain Kate says maybe just 14 is just a little bit too much. Okay. Um, let's see here. <laughs> that was a little bit far fetched, you have to admit, right? But hey. I tried to answer the question as honestly as I could. I'm not going to brag and say, hey, I can take on like 14 people. I mean, do I look like Bruce Lee, guys? Come on. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty strong and stuff, but do I look like Bruce Lee? No, I can't take. Heck, if 14 people ran in here with sharp sticks, I might be screwed, right? <laughs> uh, Richard Hughes, what's happening, Richard? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> like Mateo said, time to reconsider some basic – um. Basic neighborhood security. <laughs> oh, that made me laugh. That was that was pretty good. Um, let's see here. There's some long range guys in the chat. If someone can help out Captain Kate, and you guys already are, I knew you guys would do this. Uh, Walter Miner, how's it going, Walter? There's always smart people in the chat that'll answer your questions if I don't read them or or don't have time, you know. Jorge um Vargas says, which gun? Do you like better, the G2C, G2S, or G3? Ah, uh, you're killing me, dude. Um, all of them? Is that a good answer? Here's the thing. I've done videos showing you guys the differences. So which one do I like more? Well, if I was going to conceal carry, the G2C or the G2S. A little bit deeper concealed carry where I can't print, probably the G2S. Now, Am I going out to the range? Okay. Am I going out to the range? G3. The trigger is so much better on the G3. Now, this doesn't mean I'm not going to trigger on the trigger on the G2C. It's fine. It's good. But this has a better trigger. Like it really, really does. Being a full-size pistol, it handles the recoil a little bit better. Okay. 
Four inch barrel is only going to add to terminal velocity, ballistics, right? More effective against the target. Possibly a little more accurate due to the barrel having a few more lands and grooves in it. That bullet can twist a little longer before it leaves the barrel. And you just simply have a longer sight radius. I know I'm just kind of rehashing stuff I've done videos on, but it's, it's the truth. All of them. I'll put it into two really small categories for you guys, okay? Range gun, home defense gun. You're not truck gun, car gun. You're not worried about concealing it, G3. Concealed carry, G2C, or even maybe the G2S. I'm more inclined to say the G2C because it's not much bigger for having like 50% more rounds. But in some states where there's mag capacity limits, this brings this in to be a really good choice because you can only have 10 either way, and this is thinner. So there you go, Jorge. Hopefully that was a decent answer. But I, but I really do like them all, and I mean that. Um, Let's see here. We have Walter Miner. He's um he's helping you, um Captain Kate. Happy Turkey Day to you, uh, Richard Hughes. Last time I saw Richard Hughes eating, he was he had he said he hadn't seen any llama, and I thought at first that he really did, but since I got him back, I guess Richard, you're good, man. I, I thought you almost ate my llama for a minute. You kind of had me convinced. Go to my community tab, guys, from about a couple months back if you want to get the joke. I mean, it's an inside joke, but it's not. It's right in public in the um, in my community tab when the llama went missing for a little bit there. It was kind of scary, but we're all good now. Um, let's see here. Long-legged Mac Daddy. Hey, the 1911 was a good video. You know what? Thanks, man. I'm glad you liked it. And it's kind of funny you said that because the 1911 is sitting right here. I actually got a couple little like accessories for this, if you will. So I'll give you guys a sneak preview of an upcoming video. So you guys remember that saw the video. I was like, man, this is pretty darn close to a USGI. But the grips, they're okay, but they're not really like that good of a replica of the USGI polymer grips. So I went on eBay. I found a set of genuine, you know, um, new old stock military surplus USGI. 1911 A1 grips. I just got an email actually from eBay like an hour or two ago. I haven't been home yet for the night, guys. Went from the job site, unpacking straight to the screen here. But I saw so I'm going to do a little um, upgrade, you know, video showing the just a little follow up, you know, showing the USGI grips. I think that's going to be the finishing touches on this guy. So, and I also have another accessory that I'll show you guys in the upgrade. I'll show you real quick. It's right here. I got a USGI World War II era holster. So you can see the US right there. This wasn't a real expensive one. These go from mild to wild. This was actually pretty cheap. It's missing a little tassel, which made it where it's not collectible, but I don't have the money to buy a collectible 1911 holster. So I just bought one that, you know, is in decent shape, good enough, but it's certainly going to look really cool with this 1911A1 with the correct military surplus grip panels. So let me know what you guys think about that. It's just going to be a small little, you know, follow-up video. And hopefully I've had time to go out to the range from now till then and do some shooting. So we can show you some shooting updates and a couple little, you know, cosmetic upgrades, right? I'm a big sucker for mill serps, guys. I wish so bad I could have got one of those from CMP. I put my name in the lottery. I didn't win it. Going on to gun broker, secondary market, I can't afford a 1911A1 right now. I mean, I guess I could sell all their stuff and get one, but I don't know. It's just a big investment. So that's why I got the um, T-Sauce. It's kind of a fill-in stand-in. And maybe someday I'll win the lottery and get a um, get a real one, you know? RJL. <laughs> oh, boy. He says, he says, Bruce Lee, nah, more like Chuck Norris had a baby with Bruce Willis. I'll take that as a compliment. Those guys are those guys are pretty tough dudes in their own right. So thanks, RJ. I appreciate it. <laughs> Matt Morris and 14 against one. Mike Tyson don't even stand a chance. I hear you. Um, best best gun underwater. Spear gun. I would concur with that. 
Yeah, probably, actually. Oh, come on, poor conservative. Still not quite as good as a 40. There you go again. Didn't Ronald Reagan say that? So there you go again. I know poor conservative's a Ronald Reagan fan. Question is, is he old enough to remember Ronald Reagan? I don't know. Let's ask him. Um, just looking here. You guys are helping answer questions. Yeah, please, guys, help out if anyone has questions because if I answer all of them, I'm going to be talking questions, and I know someone's going to really be getting impatient. I, I, want, I want to talk about the holster, guys. I really, really do. A real 1911 A1, man, they're from mild to wild, you know. If you want to get one that's kind of like correct, meaning it hasn't had a million parts replaced on it, I couldn't imagine getting one cheaper than like 1200 bucks, all the way up to a couple, two, 3000 And then, of course, they can go museum investment grade, like a Singer 1911, Singer sewing machines. I don't know what, like a million dollars or something. There's only like a couple in existence. So, yeah. But you're, you're talking easily two, three grand for a decent actual USGI um, 1911 A1 or even pre A1. Um, let's see here. How does it look in the case? Well, I got to I got to leave a little teaser, Raphael, and no one's going to watch the standalone video, right? If you guys are having a good time and you like the stream, go ahead and give me a thumbs up cuz even people that like it more than anyone, they'll, they'll give it a thumbs down, so throw me a thumbs up if you guys are having at least a halfway decent time. Limbert Johnson, what's happening Limbert? How you doing, buddy? Uh-oh, white snake, here I go again. You guys don't want me to do karaoke. I'll just I'll just shut up and pretend that um and pretend that uh, Jeremy Wilson didn't say that. Come on, poor conservative. Man, I was trying to I was trying to cover for you, okay? Now you're exposing your true age if you were working in Washington, DC when um no, that's cool. You got to meet Ronald Reagan, though. That's that's really cool. That's really, really cool. All right. So AR. Cheap versus expensive. Let me write that down. Okay. I'm getting ideas, guys. Anyone that's just come in here tonight, getting ideas. You guys have any video ideas? Let me know. All right. Started off with this blank sheet of paper. I've got three things on it now. Besides stuff that was already on my list, the 1911 A1 grips and holster, that's on the list. I, I got a marker board over there on the refrigerator, you know. Uh-oh, we got old men in the chat here. And then we have young men like Jeremy Wilson. All right, so anyways, this holster, guys, I'm going to show you guys real quick here. This is a forged tech holster. Let me, why won't it zoom in on this? These black business cards make it so hard to read. It doesn't like to zoom in. All right, I'm going to send you guys a link right now down into the chat here. Let me grab this. They have an eBay store. They have a website, both. I have already recorded a video that's going to be coming out very early, soon next week. Here is their eBay store. This is the link to the exact one I purchased. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've been finding myself carrying OWB a lot more lately, even for concealed carry, right? And especially for range carry. I like to carry OWB. Now, they make OWB and IWB for the G3, also G2C, G2S, etc. So these are actually pretty affordable, guys. They're handmade Kydex by a small business. Now, they're located here in Michigan, but they'll ship to you guys all the way across the country, so you don't have to be local. And just overall, and you guys are going to see a couple videos on this. I'm going to do like a five-minute one for people that already know holsters and just want to see this. And then I actually have like a 35-minute video already recorded about this holster, but it's really more of a holster 101, just explaining holsters more thoroughly for people that are just getting into holsters, right? But right off the bat, very high degree of fit and finish. Along all of the edges, they are burnished down very, very smooth. I like the way the mouth of it has a nice taper. The fasteners are of very high quality. Okay. 
slick smooth on the inside, which is what you want. A little bit of texture on the outside. And what's really cool is he sells it in two different options. So you're looking at like 30 bucks to get it with a paddle and the um, on the holster itself. 30 bucks, which is not bad. And it's hard for me to really explain it without you guys, you know, touching it. But like everything on this is like very, very smooth. I don't see one burr, one snag, one flaw. And this is nice that these areas are smoothed out because they could be rubbing up against your body, especially with an IWB, and they're certainly going to be rubbing against the gun. So you can adjust your retention right here with these two screws, but the way I received it, the retention is just perfect where I can literally, you know, but it's real easy to draw from. I mean, look how smooth this is. I really like his design too, because check this out. When I'm wearing it on my hip, I don't know about you guys, right? But what I like to do every once in a while, and people say, oh, you shouldn't do this. Now, this is not one of my holster belt pants. This is like me out picking up leaves pants. Every once in a while, I don't know about you guys, but I like to kind of just put my hand here, and I like to just kind of do a little tension check just to make sure it's still in there. Well, if you're just pushing down on the back strap, you're making your pants sag. Look at this little button here. It serves two purposes, and I don't even know if the second one here is his intended purpose. The first one's obviously, you put your finger there, right? Draw from the holster. It lines up perfect with that memory pad indexing point that's on the pistol, right? So that's its first and foremost use. But what I've been finding myself doing when I'm sitting there, you know, is grabbing onto the back. And see how I can just curl my finger up under here a little bit? That way I can, you guys see what I'm doing here? I can push down to make sure just a quick retention check with a little bit of upward pressure to keep it from moving my, you know, pants up and down. So it's little things like that. After having a bunch of holsters that kind of separates what I think is a really nice holster versus one that's just eh, whatever. I also like his design too, where the reliefs are. So many people that make Kydex holsters get caught up too much into where the, you know, convex kydex has to be molded like around things but they forget that it's nice to have a relieved area too and that's what gives you the positive retention right but the very very smooth reholstering and just that nice gentle click into place i don't like my kydex holster where it has to clunk and you have to have the retention all the way down and this isn't exactly an accident it actually has to do with the design now, are there many other good holster companies out there? I'm sure there are. I'm just literally sought out this company. So I put the link to his eBay store in there. And he's a small business. And that's who I wanted to support. I didn't want to get in with any big industry company. Like this is a guy that's literally making the holsters by himself. He, from what I understand, is making about 10 holsters a day. So a busy business. He does it enough to be good at it. But this is not a corporate conglomerate where there's like, Safari Land or any of those big companies. You know, you guys know what I'm saying. And that's who I'm all about. I own a small business. I like to support small businesses, you know? So, yeah. And the other thing, too, is like I said, go look at his eBay store. 100% positive feedback. So, after I read all of that, I had been doing some research around town, asking some guys, and he was recommended by a couple people. Went to his eBay store. eBay's a rough place, trust me. You can sell the most perfect product ever. You'll get a negative feedback just randomly. 100% positive feedback. So there you go, guys. Now, here's what's cool. The paddle and the holster itself, 30 bucks. Free shipping. This is for OWB. That's because that's my preference. He has the IWBs, not a problem. If you click on that link I gave you, you can go in there and see the other options. Many other types of pistols, too. Now, check this out. This is this Dots Combat Clip. This thing is pretty freaking cool. So you put your belt through there. It clips into place. What I like about it is a couple of little details. So it basically has a little push button. You push the button and it can now swing freely, right? Okay. If you don't want to push the button, like when you're carrying for the day, you just slide this little lever. Now it disables the button and you're positively locked in place. And you're locked on a round locking bar. Now, Again, just little details, which really matter. You can see we have a squared off. We have a squared off lodge here that's going to lock around a round bar. 
Do you know how many holster clips I've seen where it's square on square and it just doesn't mesh right? So this is a big plus that we actually have a steel place here where the clip meshes, which that's good. Steel's going to be, you know, generally stronger than polymer. And it's a round surface and it just, you guys see how nice that works? I would also note there's a round hinge here that's made out of the same type of steel on the top. Maybe we can see that from the, um, maybe the camera will pick that up. There we go. Now, here's what else is cool about this. I have it set up right now for a more of a vertical carry, right, on my hip. You can also take this same, the same, um, the same dot. There we go. Combat loop here. And see how there's nine holes? Well, he has three spots in the holster here that it connects to. And I would note that it is properly bolstered. So see the bolster coming up from the bottom? This whole area of the holster is bolstered also. Reinforced, you know, like a gusset, if you will, right? And you can literally switch this around and make it where it's now horizontal. And that would be to put on like your pals webbing, molly webbing. Say you wanted this as a chest rig pistol. There you go. One more thing that's really cool. So there's our space from here to here that can be adjusted for your belt. Different widths of belts all the way up to two inches. I'll check this out. So two inches. This little peg comes out. It's like a tongue and groove fit. We can take it all the way down to a quarter of an inch. So now with this spacer in here, okay, we only have, can you guys see that there? We just have that minute amount of area in between there. This would be so you could hook the holster to cordage. So we can go from paracord to pals, molly webbing, all the way up to and including a two-inch belt, vertical or horizontal. Now, if you want this clip, you can get it for 40 bucks. So the holster as pictured here with this combat clip here and the same holster, 40 bucks. If you also want the paddle, so you can have, you know, options. You can switch them back and forth, $43. So everything you see here, I just dropped something again. See, Jeremy Wilson had to jinx me. I'm, that's becoming my new trademark, isn't it, man? But there you go. The paddle, which is made in the USA. That's awesome. A nice thick polymer. Black oxide hardware on everything on this holster, by the way. Real nice looking screws. Same thing with the little recessed nuts. 43 bucks free shipping for everything we see here. 30 bucks for the holster with the paddle. 40 bucks for the holster with the clip. Free shipping. So there you guys go. That's my recommendation. It took me some research over the last few weeks to find somebody that I could recommend. I've been messing around with this holster enough on my own. I had some personal recommendations, looked at the eBay feedback, started emailing back and forth a little bit with the maker himself. He seems like a really nice guy. And those are kind of the only types of people that I want to support. So, and then look, guys, I swear to God on my life, I'm not getting any commission at all. Nothing. He did send me this holster to the channel. He did send me this holster, but that's after I sought him out and was getting ready to buy it and had some questions and said, I want to know some questions about this before I can, you know, do my video. And he said, man, just let me send it to you. You know? So he sent it to me. I'll probably end up buying another one with my own money later, but Again, no commission, nothing. But if you guys do buy one from him, Forge Tech Holsters, tell him 2AEDU sent you. Because if he sees that, you know, we're getting a good response and good community here, maybe he'll send me something else and I'll give it away to you guys. So I don't I don't need a bunch of holsters, guys. I really don't. So yeah, just tell him I sent you and he can be part of our little community here and hang out with us, you know? This is the paddle. This is called a paddle holster clip here. So now if it's an IWB, it's going to have different attachments and you can check out his eBay store. He's got all of those too. Do you guys need the um, link to the, in case someone just came in here, here's the link to the, to this exact eBay item. One more time. It's forgedtechholsters.com. And I don't know why it's just not wanting to focus on this. I've got my hand there. I know why it's, I guess it's because of the black. ForgedTechHolsters.com. Go over to his IG, Forged Tech Holsters on Instagram. He has a bunch of really, really cool things on there. Really nice pictures, actually. So, 
Not trying to make this sound like an infomercial, guys, but this is how I am. I really have to get excited about your product before there's even a chance for it to show up on this channel. And so far, you have I have to come to you before I'm going to show your product. So if you guys want to know why I'm acting like I'm all geeked about this, it's because I love it. I love small businesses. And like I said, I, I got really, really excited about this before I even... Before I even did the video, if I would have got it and it would have totally sucked, I would have sent it back and said, I don't like it. So there you go. Oh, let's see here. Let's see who else has popped in here. I thought I saw a couple new faces pop in the chat. Well, they're not new, just new for tonight. Vanessa Kitty, nice touchy feely review. Oh boy. She come in when I was doing that, but no, it's. This is a touchy-feely. It's very, very smooth, guys. All right, all right, enough of that. Enough touchy-feely. Uh, Tactica Review, what's going on, man? Need to see if he has an OWB G19 with Enforce, APLC, and Red Dot. Hey, and I will tell you guys this, too. I gave you the link to the eBay store, but the reason I told you guys about his IG, Forged, F-O-R-G-E-D, space T-E-C, space holster. That's the name of his company, right? And it's forgedtechholsters.com. If you go to his website, he can do custom stuff there. eBay is basically stuff that they're all built to suit. Every single one of them is, right? And But they're still like he has kind of like a menu you can order off of for eBay. Tons of other colors available. Even on eBay, you can get five or six colors. I just want a black. I'm going for the whole Ford Model T thing. Look, I'm a Metro Detroit resident. Like Henry Ford said, you can get the Model T in any color you want as long as it's black. So I went with the black holster. There's like six stock colors you can choose from right there on eBay. If you want the exotic patterns, the cool stuff, custom for a certain laser, light, whatever you're talking about, that's where you reach out to him either on his Instagram, Forge Stock Holsters. If you guys go over to my gram and look at who I'm following, you'll see I'm following him. So if you forget anything else, go look over on my gram page. You'll see I'm following him. You can reach out to him, instant message there. And Tactica Review, tell him you're a good buddy of mine. And yeah, say, hey, man, I'm friends with 2A EDU. I mean, all you guys are in here are my friends. I didn't ask him ahead of time if he's going to give discounts to anyone. Look, I'm not that big of a channel, guys. I'm just trying to look out for fellow small business people. Most of the channels that say click on my exclusive link and get the 10% discount, there's been a financial arrangement made, and there's nothing wrong with that. But in this case, I have no financial arrangement whatsoever with this man. I sought him out, love his holster to death. So there you guys go. Um, long leg Mac Daddy, your belly looks like mine. It's hard to appendix carry. Yeah, yeah. Um, daily function, sitting, standing, etc. And I hear you, but I'll be honest, man, I've I've lost about 50 pounds. So if you would have seen me just like six, seven months ago quite a bit bigger. So still got a long way to go. I'm still quite overweight, but I was getting really close to 300 guys. It never quite hit 300. I'd have no reason to lie, but it did hit 298 and I'm down in the 240s now. So I'm working on it. And any of you guys that need to lose some weight, it's hard to do, but I encourage you guys too. I'm trying my hardest. I'm still more overweight than probably any of you guys, but just trying to lose some weight and get a little bit healthier, you know? Um, yeah, Big Mo. Like I said, check it out. You know, I, I really, I really, really am happy with this holster so far. I really am. Show just what's happening, man. Another Michigan guy in here. Um, what's my feelings on OWB versus concealment? Well, we can talk a little more about it maybe in a video. I'll get to that in a little bit. Remind me if I forget. It's one of those things where I think I could kind of give you some some pros and cons, but I could talk about this for two hours. It's one of those. Um, let's see here. Did I grab anything from Olight today? I went on Olight last night and I got their free little rechargeable light. Like this isn't the Olight. This is a, um, what brand is this? Mech Army that I've had for years. Awesome little rechargeable light. I got Olight's version. It's free and it's $5 shipping. So I thought that was cool. So did not buy anything from Olight. I got the free item that cost me five bucks out the door. So I did do that. Does he make them for the G2C? Yes. Forge Tech Holsters definitely makes them for the G2C. IWB and OWB, like I showed you. 
Explicit's back. If you're interested in the G3 holster, you're going to have to rewind. I am, <laughs> I'm not going to repeat all of it, but you guys can all go back and watch if you just joined in. This will be up on the channel, you know, permanently. Um, what the heck is going on here? We've got um, Log Legged Mac Daddy gave me a super chat. That wasn't necessary, man, but I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. We've got, um, let's see here. Oh, there's my mouse. I thought I lost my mouse. Just taking a quick peek here at the chat. Fierce Mouse, he's been doing keto and it's unreal. Amen, man. That's basically what I've been doing too. Kind of like what they call a dirty keto. No, it doesn't mean I'm eating my food off the floor, guys. Although I am a landscaper. When I'm out working, I, I'm eating my lunch and sometimes I'm like, <laughs> oh, that was some of the leaves that I was just blowing up. Oh. Got a little bit of grass clippings come off my must. You guys that work outside know what I'm talking about, right? But no, dirty keto means I'm not like literally having like the 25 carbs or less. I am still having some milk product. I like to have me some plain yogurt with some blueberries in it and stuff like that. But real, real low glycemic index carbs if I am having them. But no wheat or potatoes or rice or any of that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's been working out really good for me. And I feel like I have so much more energy too. I really, really do. So yeah, to answer a couple of you guys' questions, yep. Low carb, borderline keto. Um, yeah, this is your um, this is your combat loop here, like I was saying earlier. Um, RJ. This is more of an OWB thing, right? You wouldn't want this on an IWB, so yeah. This is definitely offering. This isn't a bad deal. Remember I told you guys this is like a $10 upcharge. If you buy these dots, combat loops on here for just a la carte, the cheapest I could find it anywhere was like 10 bucks, but they were like five, $6 shipping. So the fact that he's adding this on for just the 10 with no shipping because all of his holsters are free shipping, it's actually a really good deal. Like he might get these in bulk and save a couple dollars a piece, but I don't think he's ripping you off with this $10 add-on. This is really, really nice. If it's the type of connection you're looking for, I can see like 10 reasons why you would want this loop. And there might be reasons you wouldn't want to have it. A lot of people don't like the basic paddle. I don't mind it. I'm actually going to be doing some shooting, um, you know, a shooting video drawing from this with both the loop and the paddle. So if you guys want to, you know, watch that, go ahead. I don't really know if you need to wait to buy one for the video, but I am going to show you guys some on the range. Like I'm really excited to keep this around just for my, um, my range footage. So I'm planning on doing quite a few more shooting videos with this G3. I really like the G3. Any of you G3 owners out there? Do you guys agree with me? The trigger, the trigger, you know what I'm saying? The trigger's pretty freaking good, man. Like, like this is a 220 something to $250 pistol. No, it's not as good as a 1911. Let me get this out of the way. I'm totally, totally, totally just trying to be a stick in the spokes for the 1911 guy that's going to come in. And I can rip on anyone I want. You know why? I also love 1911s. Like, when you like as many guns as me, you can rip on anybody because then you're ripping on yourself. Not. Nah, that was a joke. I don't want to rip on none of you guys. But look, this three pound, this three pound 1911 A1 trigger, it's it's better than the G3. Okay, okay, it is. But, but, I dare somebody to find a nicer 225 to 250 dollar striker fire pistol that has a nicer trigger than this. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Like. Okay, tactical review said, look, guys, none of you guys are gonna get none of you guys are gonna get ripped on because tactical review said he was gonna take the full brunt. So I'm only gonna rip on tactical review. Okay, let's see here. Tactical review is terrible because he, he likes Glocks. And oh shoot, I like Glocks too. Tactical review is terrible because he did a really cool video on the 22 long rifle CMMG conversion kit. Oh, wait, I have one of those too. Ah. Uh, I'll get you, buddy. I'll rip on you for something. Trust me. Um, Jorge Vargas, two ninety nine again. Fist bump. There we go. I'm kind of. You guys see that chicken on the screen? He's. 
<laughs> Actually, you know what? I started off this chat totally ripping on these stickers, and I, I guess this is made. I mean, YouTube, YouTube people that are listening, this is not made for kids. I checked that it's not, but I guess this is kind of made for kids because I'm, I'm having fun watching this little it is actually kind of okay here's the deal guys it's so freaking corny i actually like it and i have a seven-year-old daughter so i think i've kind of taken a liking to a lot of that kind of stuff do you guys have little ones is, is that true or is it just me like this is the stupidest thing ever and then after you're sitting there in front of it for 20 minutes you're like all right all right i can watch this you, you guys know what i mean it's it's bad uh <laughs> Yeah, RJ, no problem, man. I think the loop's great, too. <laughs> okay, okay. Long like Mac Daddy said I can continue. But, 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 Elias just came in. How's it going, Elias? Um, <coughs> Tactical Review did what he had to do, guys. Because here's the deal. I'm not quite as tough as Chuck Norris, okay? I'm not quite as tough as Bruce Lee, but I'm pretty freaking tough. Let's face it. Can't you guys tell? Okay. I'm pretty tough. So he brought in his backup here. And I actually want to give a shout out to these guys. Tactica Review, Elias. They did their very first live stream just a couple days ago. I was in the crowd the whole time. Um, some of my guys, I, well, you guys aren't my guys, but people that are regulars in here, you know, were in there. Um, I know Raphael was in there. Jet was in there. A couple other guys I recognized. It was a pretty freaking good little stream, guys. Their very first time. I wouldn't have known it's their first time. I think they cheated and practiced maybe a little bit. Look, tactical review, I, I know you practiced because there's no way you had the split screen that perfect. But, yeah, it was a really, really good stream. And they're planning on doing a podcast. So you've got tactical review. He was bringing it, you know, from the gun right side of things. They were talking about red flag laws, the dangers of them. You know, I'm not going to give it away. You guys can still go watch it. It's up on their channel. But I had a really, really good time in there, you know. I'm, I'm big into gun rights. It's one of my main passions, and they did good. Now, Elias is looking to do a more of a, a, a freedom, liberty aspect of guns podcast, and I wish you the best of luck, Elias. Just watching you on that one um, pilot episode that you did with Tactical Review, you're good, man. Your heart's in the right place, and all of us need each other, and all of us need guys like you out there fighting the good fight, you know? And I hope something with the Firearms Radio Network turns out, man. That's probably a good network for you to be on. And I'm going to send out an email to Jake Challen later this weekend. I've just been so busy the last two days. But, yeah, shout out to Elias and um, Tad Ticket Review. They, they were bringing it, man. They did a good job talking about gun rights. They really did. So, yeah, Raphael Davis, there he is. He had a good time. Me and him and some other guys were hanging out in there. So, yeah, shout out to those guys. Um, Let's see here. <laughs> Mac Daddy says, show off that 1911. That gun is the shiz, Nettie said. I, I'm trying to keep it family friendly. YouTube, it's not for kids. This is an inside joke. You guys know YouTube has that big thing right now, right? When you go to put up a video, it's plastered with this big blue banner with all these asterisks on there. And it's like, are there kids? Are there kids? Oh, oh, we can't teach kids about guns. If kids learn about guns, then their teachers won't be able to brainwash them. Then we'll have to spend more taxpayer dollars to brainwash even more. We can't have that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that's what YouTube's doing right now behind the scenes. Just so you guys know, they're saying kids, 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 kids. But then every time there's gun grabbers that want our guns, they say do it for the kids. So there's gun grabbers and there's YouTube. And then I repeat myself. All right. All right. I'm back with it now, guys. I, I'm not going to keep repeating myself. <laughs> oh man uh lincoln tanksley how's it going baby shark he says was that your old um was that your old youtube name i think i've seen a guy running around down here called baby shark actually oh Raphael says there's a whole youtube kids app there you go there you go basically there's only one youtube channel my daughter is allowed to watch and that's daddy's channel so Shout out to you, baby girl, if you're watching. She's not watching live right now. She's in bed, but she'll come back and tune in every once in a while. Wu-Tang is also for kids. You know what? That brings up a good topic, Lincoln. Um, Some parents, 
are going to say no. Some parents, yes. Yeah. See, that's the great thing about this country and the Bill of Rights. The government's not allowed to infringe on any of them. So if a parent feels that they want their kid to listen to, and I don't know Wu-Tang's music that much. I mean, I know who they are. I'm assuming it's decent music. I just don't really know it a lot. But if that's what you want your kid to listen to, neither YouTube nor the government nor anybody should be able to tell you no. If you feel that your kid needs to listen to only Johnny Cash, that's fine too. Huge Johnny Cash fan. If you don't think your kid should listen to Johnny Cash, well, then that's your choice. So, yeah. I think what it comes down to is, is you've got parents that are just using the, the media, the screens, we'll just call them, all the different forms of screens. They're using it as a babysitter, and it's easier just to plunk the screen right in front of the kid, walk away, and know that YouTube, that Big Brother is going to do the parenting for you. And here's the problem. Having kids is a lot of responsibility, and it takes a lot of time, like an untold amount of time. And if you don't want to give up that time, guess what you're doing? You're trading your liberty and your kid's liberty for control from people like YouTube, the government, Uncle Sam, people that say, don't worry about it. Just send your kids to us. We'll take care of them. They'll be fine. You can sit and watch your soap opera while your kids are watching exactly what we want them to watch, curated in the exact search results we want them to find it in. And before you know it, your kid's going to decide that, well, this music's bad or firearms are bad, right? Because... I kind of sort of doubt it that YouTube or anyone from any form of government is going to come in and say, hey, look, here's how you should expose a child to firearms. Here's how you should teach them safety as they progress and get older and older, right? I kind of highly doubt you're going to see that. So what you're probably going to see is guns are bad. Guns kill people. People don't kill people. You're going to see that. You're going to say, well, this music is a little too edgy in this way. It's a little too edgy in that way. Or maybe it's not edgy enough. It's called being parents and taking the time to actually know where your kid's at, know what they're doing. Do you need to give your kids some personal space? Of course you do. Of course you do. You can walk out of the room. I'm not saying to go the opposite extreme and become OCD because then the kid will freak out and want to do whatever they can just to show their parents that they're their own boss. But there's a fine line there. But for people that think you can just park your kid in front of something and by YouTube creators checking a certain box saying, you know, I'm COPPA compliant, I'm this, I'm that. No. What do you think is going to happen? If you want YouTube to raise your kids, that's fine. Now, is the YouTube app great for kids? Fine. I'm sure it's good. Not a problem. But there's a lot more to life that kids are going to need to learn. And they should learn at a young age. That quite frankly, they're never going to see on any YouTube app. I can guarantee you that. So, and the thing is, this show is family friendly. Like, do I cuss on here? Not really. I try to use alternate words if I do feel the need, you know. I'll say shoot instead of the other word. I'll say shiznit, but whatever. You guys know what I'm saying. And look, there's even stuffed animals on this channel. You know what I'm saying? There's cute little furry animals. I mean, this is Lamy the Llama. Kids like this kind of stuff. At least I hope kids still like stuffed animals. I know my daughter does. <laughs> Guns and stuffed animals, right? And oh, by the way, if you guys are worried about llama, hey, look. He's well covered now. All right. Yeah. Llama sports an 8K. So just because he's cute, don't think he's harmless. And don't think that he's helpless. He's He's got his own back. You guys know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. All right. Kind of go off on a little tangent, which I usually like to do. Uh, let's see here. Geeks vids, right on. Each kid must memorize the rules of gun safety at a minimum. I agree. And new adult shooters too, right? Yes, sir. That's awesome. Welcome, by the way. Uh-oh, Richard Hughes is like llama. Mm. Go to my community thing when you guys are done with the stream. It's actually kind of funny. It really is. My my community tab, rather, that's on YouTube. Um. Okay. Fierce Mouse says, my kids are burned with firearms. I have to beg them to shoot with me. That sucks, man. Even, even newer guns, they're still bored with it. But I'm sure you brought them up right where they know gun safety and they know how to have guns around them, right? I don't know how old your kids are either, though. I really don't. Long-legged Mac Daddy says preach. <laughs> I don't know if I'm preaching, but, you know, 
sometimes I get a little thought in my head and I'm like, okay, Jorge Vargas is telling us about a deal. Yeah, yeah, tactical review. The Third Reich also said citizens need to give up liberties for the kids. I can't even say that word you typed out loud, tactical review. The algorithm will take that word and they'll just start doing this with the stream afterwards. Like, I mean, I can say it. I'm just choosing not to right now. It's that bad. This algorithm is something else, man. This algorithm is a real MF, if you guys know what I'm saying. Like, like big time, too. I'm taking a quick peek. Ooh, Richard Hughes got a 20-inch stainless 6.5 Creedmoor AR-10. Is that the whole rifle or just the upper? I'm assuming that's just the upper, right, Richard? Or did you get the whole gun for that price? Ooh, I want a high tower armory bullpup. Any of you guys want one of those for your high point carbines? I like so want one. They're really, really cool. The only thing they screwed up on is I wish the high tower bullpup chassis would have somehow adapted it where it could have fed from Glock mags. If that was the case, I would own like 500 of them right now. No, I can't afford that. I would own one of them though. I really would own one right now if they would do that. Where is my high point 995? I think it's under that jacket over there. I've got one up here at the shop. I like the high point carbines for um first time shooters. Sometimes I take like younger adults out with me and stuff that are, you know, in the neighborhood working at the different stores. That's how I am, guys. I walk into the local store and I'm like, hey, what's going on? I get to know them. You seem pretty cool, you know. Do you like guns? Eh, I don't know. As long as they don't say screw you and they want to talk just a little bit, I'm like, you want to go out shooting? I show them the YouTube channel. They're like, all right, you seem pretty cool, you know, whatever. I'll take them out shooting. So the high point nine millimeter carbine is awesome for a first time shooter, in my opinion. Very little recoil. It doesn't have the muzzle flash of even a 223. Look, ARs are also awesome, awesome guns for a first time shooters, too. They really are, but they do have more muzzle flash, which, depending on the person, how timid they are, can kind of be a little bit intimidating. Just whatever you do, don't make fun of someone their first time out. I've seen that way too much. But I know none of you guys would do that. I'm just saying. Uh, oh, yeah, Matt Morrison. It's 10.30 p.m. Do you know where your kids are? Anyone remember that? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> Tactical Assault Llama. There you go. Ooh, that sounds scary, doesn't it? Monday through Friday. Um, ooh, tactical review said his daughter violated the rules of safety at the range today. We had some discussion. That's why you have to discuss it right away. Cause here's the crazy thing about the rules of gun safety. They're set up so comprehensive and they overlap. You actually have to violate more than one of them before anybody actually gets hurt. So yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um, I actually did the um, rules of gun safety. Have you guys seen that? Anyone seen that series for the newer time, you know, the newer viewers? Let's see. Ooh, 610 for the upper and lower, Richard Hughes. Are you kidding me, man? That's pretty freaking cool, dude. That's that's a good deal. I bet you it sold out. I'd like to get a 6.5 Creed. I don't have the 600. Never mind. I'm hoping it's sold out. At first, I'm like, dude, I'm going to go buy one. I don't have the 600 bucks right now. But I am getting some money together. A few new Patreon supporters came in. You guys are awesome. Sounds like some people are excited to do this G2C project. So that's where my next couple hundred bucks is going to get that second G2C. My Patreon supporters are helping me. Thanks again, guys. I'm going to kick in the rest, you know, that's required to get it. So that's what I'm going to work on next here. I'm trying to find my, um, my playlist here. Real quick, I'm just grabbing you guys a quick link here. Ooh, there's actually a fourth video that I didn't upload. Okay. You guys are going to see a flashback video from the summer here in the next week. I'm looking at this playlist, and I'm like, hmm. So there you go. There's a playlist of me, how I sit there and teach somebody how to shoot. Now, I put up this these videos earlier this summer, but if anybody ever thinks, you know, to themselves that how would I approach shooting? I'm not telling you guys to copy off me. Here's how I do it. And that um, there's the playlist right there that I popped in there. 
Um, let's see here. I am on gun streamer, guys, by the way. Fierce Mouse brought up a good point. Um, he says he says that YouTube killed off a channel that he used to dig called Peacekeeper EDC. That might be where we're forced to go shortly. So I'm glad to hang out here, guys, but make sure you're following me on gun streamer. I mean, still come on here too, because this is where I actually check the comments and respond to people. I don't really go over to Gunstreamer much just because there's kind of getting to be too much to keep up with with everything. You know, I'm getting so many comments now, and I really, really like to answer everybody's as much as I can. So I'm not really over there, but that's the only place I could be if they were to give this channel the X tomorrow. So thanks for bringing that up, Fierce Mouse. Jeremy Wilson, there's a video somewhere on Facebook of a little parakeet shooting an AK. Jeez, oh, Pete. I think we have somebody with a... um with a parakeet here in the in the chat. Any of you guys know who that is? I think I've seen one of these guys hanging out in here up there with um with this parakeet, maybe in some of the Hank Strange streams or something like that. But other than that, I have no idea who might who might have a little bird. I don't even think it's a parakeet, is it? But it's a bird. I'll just leave it at that. I'm I'm not a bird person. Um, the media bias was a huge portion of Elias and Tactical Review stream the other night. And it was. And I, I'm a political geek. I get into all that because I'm just so passionate about gun rights, you know. All right, guys. I'm going to take a five-minute break. We've been on a little over the, an hour. You guys can um, chat amongst yourselves or make fun of me while I'm gone just to pass the time. And I'll be back in five minutes. Any more requests, let me know. I'm, I'm making a little list here. If there's anything I might have kicking around the shop that someone wants to see real quick, I've got some random stuff, you know, I could pull it out and show it to you. So, yeah, Pebbles the, par the parakeet. Richard Hughes. Richard knew who I was talking about, and I'm sure half of you guys did too. So, all right. I will be back in just a minute unless 14 people come in here with submachine guns, and then God bless you all. I'll see you guys in the afterlife. but. If not, I'll be back because if there's only 13 people with submachines, I got that covered. It was just the 14 I was having a hard time with. All right. I'll see you guys in a second.
All right, I'm back. Cool, cool. Elias said he did shoot the um, firearms radio network. Um, an email. See what happens. Good luck, man. I, I did you check him out though? I'm sure you researched him a little bit ago, and I don't know. It's up to you, man. That's just the best thing I could think of because they have a wide variety of firearms related content, but I'm not really seeing anybody doing like what what you would bring to the table. I think that would add some nice balance in with it, right? There's a lot of good channels out there, and I subscribe to most of them on my little podcast Republic app. So yeah. Um, so you guys are, well, come on, Jeremy, Jeremy's, Jeremy's promoting some other parakeet channel over this one. Come on, my man. I thought we were buddy. No, you guys can go watch. <laughs> Look, there's probably like 999,000 channels better than this. So go watch it, come back, but I'm going to show you guys a little joke I played on somebody. Okay. Cause I don't know. I'm not really a funny guy per se, but I like to mess with people. So let me, I'll let you guys in on a little. Behind the scenes, uh, 2A EDU fun. Now, this is, okay, this is what I really did for fun today. I did fall cleanups for fun. I was out there picking up leaves, and it rained all day yesterday and the day before, so wet leaves. That's what I really did for fun. But here's what I did for fun today. I have to go grab this for it to make sense. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got this box here. Ugh. I had fun today, guys, with a with a box. What do you think? What do you think? Is this the best stream ever? Look at this. I'm gonna show you a box. I, I'm not gonna. Uh, there's there's something in the box. Trust me. Okay, a little background information. So, you guys were here last week, and I'm these aren't always downer streams. It's just I was giving you my raw reaction. That stream sucked last week for me. It just sucked. The Gallant, go look at it. But if you do watch the old, the original Gallant video, watch the newest one because I was being completely fair. And look, I talked to Clint. He was very, very nice. They said they're going to be, they're, they're going to make it right. They're exchanging my Gallant for me and they're going to make sure it's a good one, which is no different than what they do for any of you guys. They wanted to make that clear. So I'll just get that out of the way. The video is up there and you'll see it. You'll see the one where I'm ripping the gun to shreds as it deserved. And I did have a chainsaw last week. That's true. Um, Will G, I see your question. One second, buddy. One second. And if I forget, then go at 2AEDU and I'll remember. But hold on, guys. So in the meantime, Clint reached out to me on a Sunday, two days after I did that stream and very professional. I mean, not many companies would have done that. So that was pretty cool. So look, Clint works for Classic Firearms. You guys know who he is, right? Like, obviously you do. They have like 130,000 subs and he's their main front person for the YouTube channel. Well, he works for Classic. He's in with the industry, whatever. All he has to do for Classic is, and his role at Classic is get me a replacement gun, right? And we're good. That's all I want. So, but in the meantime, I've kind of, I mean, I don't know him, know him yet, but I've kind of gotten to know Clint just a little bit. We've been exchanging some IG messages. We've talked on the phone. And I think he's actually a pretty cool dude. He's a United States Marine. He's a he's a sergeant. He's he seems like actually a really cool dude. Because that's where he works, obviously, whatever. But I've gotten to know him just a little, little bit outside of work. So I'm I'm heading somewhere with this, you know. Clint's the um, I'm not sure how tall he is in real life, but he's the guy that has like the tattoo on his arm, you know, and he's the younger guy that's been kind of taking over for Ben on classic. And Again, I don't know him. I can't quite say we're friends per se, but I've been talking to him just enough where I actually think he's pretty cool. Like if he lived in the area, I'd go shooting with the dude, that type of thing, right? He's a pretty cool guy. So I, I'm, I'm following him on his personal IG account. He has his own IG. You know, there's the classic firearms, but there's his own IG account, right? So we're following each other on there, send each other a couple private messages. So just to put this all into context, you guys saw the Gallant video. Clint saw it, everybody saw it, whatever, right? Now, I took this, what's in the box right here, and I said, hey, uh, hey, dude, we have like a problem here and stuff, bro, because my Gallant turned on me and I had to put it down. Now, I'm going to post this on my IG for everyone else, but I took this original Israeli, Israeli Galil parts kit and I laid it all the way out into the shape of the gun itself. 
Now, this is a really cool kit. All the kits don't give you this. But this actually has the cut receiver sections in it. Okay? This has been demilled per ATF where it's not a gun. But I'm going to send it to the fine people that made this Yugo M64 Reweld, Two Rivers Arms. And I'm going to pay them and probably wait like a year. But it's fine. It's worth the wait, guys. Two Rivers. Shout out to them. I'm going to have this rewelded back together and turned into a, um, you know, semi-automatic Galil clone with all the original selector markings. So can you guys imagine this? I lay all of this out on, 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 on a table and take a picture and I send it to him direct message. And I'm like, yeah, dude. Um, yeah. Like we got a big problem here. My Galant turned on me and I had to put it down and you guys kind of probably get the point, right? All of these parts are laid out. Because this kit has the original barrel sections in it. It has the original stock. So look at here. We've got the front barrel components with the cut barrel. So I'm putting all the pieces together. And it actually looks like I took a Galil and cut it up into a bunch of pieces. And yeah, he got back to me and was like, dang it, dude. Oh, man. Like, LOL. You know, so just a little inside joke. This is what I do for fun. I was messing with. Clint from Classic Firearms. Now, I'm sure he didn't really fall for it, guys. Just humor me. Let's say it. I'm, I'm going to guess he fell for it just for a second. He probably didn't, though. But, yeah, I thought it was pretty funny. This is cool, by the way. This is what I love about these parts, kids. Not only can I get a gun built off of this, but I'm going to have them re-weld these, these back here, okay? These sections back. Okay, the light's hard to pick up, but you can see the original Israeli sort of David marking. At least I hope I can. I'm going to try to buy a better camera eventually, guys. This is just like, you know, a $70, $80 webcam. Try in here. There we go, right there, right there. Look at that. The original Israeli markings here. Pretty cool. This is why I like these original, you know, parts kits. So, yeah. Um, let's see here. So, Jorge Vargas, would you prefer patron support or the super chat stickers? Look, they're both cool. Like, if you do it during the stream here, it's kind of like fun and it's a shout out to me and I really appreciate it. Um, Patreon, they disperse at the end of the month. So, if anyone wants to help me out on Patreon, either just in general or with this G2C project, where I'm trying to give back to you guys, by the way, for those of you that saw that video, the point was this. If everyone chips in just a couple bucks, it might save you money, right? And if you like the channel, you're helping to support me making more videos. You guys know what I'm saying. But if I put two, you know, $40, $50 triggers in this and do reviews and you decide which one you want to buy, Maybe it helps, you know, either save you money or save some money towards what you're donating on Patreon. So this was just something we could all do, like, as friends, just to hang out and have a good time with. And I could pop up videos on a continual basis. So, and if you're not into the G2C and you don't even like it, I promise you, I'm going to be having more. I'm going to be having more um, videos on all kinds of other stuff, too. This is never just going to be the G2C Taurus channel. But there's still going to be Taurus guns for the near future because they're freaking sweet for the money and I'm having a lot of fun with them, right? But plenty of other guns. My Patreon supporters saw a sneak peek of a video I did. I'm doing the little vlog style videos. I think I'm going to put out one, maybe two a week just to give you guys a little insight hanging out at the shop. Here's a quick look at this. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. To answer your question, you got me off on a tangent. I'm blaming it on you, man. You made me go on the. I went off on the tangent under my home free will. I'm kind of known for that. So, no, to answer your question, look, I like the super chats in one way because it's kind of fun, right? But YouTube takes out a very large percentage of them for their cut. Patreon takes out, they still take something out, but it's a very small percentage. So, there you go. Now, terms of service that I signed with YouTube to become a monetized partner, I'm not actually allowed to tell you guys the financial dealings with them. So I'm not gonna because their algorithm will hear me saying it. So YouTube, I'm not going to disclose financial terms. <laughs> algorithm, are you listening to me now? But yeah, they basically, YouTube takes much more than Patreon does. But 
they're fun too. And I was having fun with the stickers. I wasn't just saying that, guys. I really they were kind of fun. So there you go. But I definitely get to keep more of the money. And it's not me. The channel does. Look, guys, I'm never going to make money off this channel. That's not my goal. If I ever say I, that's because it's my channel, right? But I'm clearly, hopefully I'm making it clear, I'm spending more money on the channel than what I could probably ever expect to bring in. It's just you guys are helping me so I can keep more, you know, cool videos coming out. Richard, serious, you read that crap? I only read it if you pay $2. No, I always read Richard Hughes stuff. Shout out to Richard Hughes, by the way. And I'm not just saying this because he paid me. He's been a buddy of mine on here for quite a while. Richard would come in here when I had <clears throat> 80 subs and five people. So shout out to the Richard Hughes channel. It's a good channel. I definitely recommend you guys go over there. Sub to him right now. Sub to him when you're done. Richard's a buddy of mine. So, But yes, I do actually read the fine print. There was a time a long time ago. I wanted to be a lawyer. Took some pre-law classes. I'm not a lawyer. so, But I'm kind of interested in that geeky stuff, okay? No, I don't really know that Patreon's anti-gun, to be quite honest. I mean, people give you different sides of it. There were some gun channels that did violate Patreon's terms of service, but it wasn't because it's guns. It was actually due to other terms of service violations that had to do with, like, giveaways and raffles, and some states require you to have, like, a gambling license. And I don't want to get into it too much. Don't take anything I say as legal advice, but there were other reasons that they... Look, I'm not trying to discount anything any other gun channel said. I'm sure everything they said is true. But Patreon does not prohibit gun content creators on there. They just don't. I've posted five YouTube videos in the last two weeks up there that are previews. I put out a little vlog-style gun video just for my Patreon supporters. It'll never be live. And there you go. I put the name of the gun right in the title. So are they anti-gun? I don't know like their morals, but their gun policies aren't quite so anti-gun. Now, look, I also have a subscribe star that I put in the um, descriptions of all my videos. As of right now, I don't have any subscribe star supporters, but if somebody wants to do that, go ahead. We'll see how that works. I have no experience. I created the account a month ago. I've had some Patreon supporters since then, but just no one's opted for the subscribe star, so I don't know quite so much about it yet. I don't even really know what their fees are, to be quite honest. Um, Elias, your connection's about seven to nine minutes behind. Maybe you can, um, maybe sometimes just slide it forward. Sometimes it's that easy. It just gets, well, I'm sure you know how to do that. You probably know how to use computers better than me, but I have had it happen. I actually had it happen on you guys' stream randomly the other night. I'm like, why am I, and I it just did it on its own. And then I just slid the bar forward. <coughs> um, Chuck Furman, have I ever thought about getting a TH9C? I've thought about it. It's not number one on my list. But if anyone else wants to know about one of those, let me know because it's only going to take a couple more people and it's going to get moved higher because quite a few people have asked about it. Okay, let's go back here. Will G had a question. Hopefully you're still there, Will. Um, I have a question, amigo. Um, I like high-quality items. I believe in spending a little more. Should I get the Taurus G2C or the SEG 365 Hellcat? This would be my first concealed carry. Okay, here's where it's tough. Oh, my gosh. That new SIG with those special sights on it, I don't like them. That's just my personal preference. The 365 had a lot of problems right out of the gate. People say it's resolved now. Me not owning a SIG 365, I can't recommend it to you. I've heard, though, that they've gotten it figured out, and a lot of people that own them love them. You won't have me recommend a gun unless I, th that I'm reviewing unless I've owned it and have some experience with it, right? So I can't recommend it to you other, other than that I've heard that SIG's gotten some of their stuff figured out as far as breaking strikers and stuff. That was well documented. But I've heard that it's good to go now. Okay, that other brand that makes the Hellcat. I don't want to get too political with you guys on this. I don't mind getting political. I just don't want to go on this tangent right now. I don't support that company, and I don't even say their name because they sold, in my opinion, they sold gun rights up the river, and they got in with the government of Illinois, and they said, we'll carve out an exception for ourselves and that other company that makes ARs that I won't name. And they literally made a lot of kitchen table FFLs clothes. So 
They got in with the gun control lobby through their competitors, which are fellow gun manufacturers and FFLs under the bus to make a buck. Look, I love the guns, the Croatian service pistols. I love my HS2000, okay? I wish so bad HS product would either A, get another importer, and I would buy the Hellcat in two minutes, okay? Trust me. There's someone in here right now that I've talked to about this. I want one so bad because I love the Croatian HS product guns. I can't support them. Now, used guns I have that I already own, I'll keep because selling it for pennies on the dollar doesn't prove anything. They got my money back when I was ignorant. And like that old Toby Keith song, somehow I wish I didn't know now what I didn't know then. But I know. I know what they did, and I can't erase it. So me, I'm going to stand up on my principles. I will not support that company. And if you're noticing, I'm not even going to mention their name because I could perceive that as advertising. But here's the thing about me, man. Well, I'm not telling you not to. That's what's great about being an American. I can choose to not buy from them all day long. But I don't call for boycotts because when you call for boycotts, you're actually just as totalitarian and dictator-like as the people that we hate. So if that's what you want, I do believe the Croatians, which they're made in Croatia, make excellent guns. Until Mr. Reese retires or sells the company or otherwise is gone, I won't give them one penny because I am going to stand on my principles. Does that mean you're bad or you're anti-2A if you support them? No. There's a million ways people think about these things. So probably a really, really long answer to a short question. But, yeah. Now, compared to the G2C, love the G2C. Love the price of it, that it's gotten more new people into guns. I'm going to shoot from the hip here. I have a lot of experience with the G2C. I trust mine. I think it's a great little gun. If you have the extra money from the reports I've heard recently, I'd probably say buy the SIG if money's not an option. Probably just threw a lot of you guys for a loop with that, but that's going to be my answer. Final answer, no, because I don't own a SIG, but there you go. Between the company I would not mention and the G2C, I, I, I think the SIG's a pretty nice little gun. And many people that I do trust have said they've really gotten the kinks worked out. Don't own one. So there you go. Maybe someday I will get one for the channel. Just not right now. They're a little pricey. Was that like a really circular answer, man? Or hopefully I cleared it up a little bit. Show just. They did screw the pooch. Vote with your wallet. That's just me. That's just me, guys. That's me. But I assure you, and this is not me being soft. Trust me. I'm very, very, very adamant in my choices. I have it all lined up in my head just how it needs to be. I won't support. I'll vehemently and adamantly not support. But I'm never going to tell you guys not to. And if you guys want to, it's called, duh, this is America. Do whatever the heck you want. I'm totally fine with it. Because I'm never going to do to you what I hate others that do to us, that try to pigeonhole us. You guys know what I'm trying to say here? Richard Hughes, I would totally love to. I, if I get an invite, I don't know how to get an invite, but if I get an invite with enough notice where I can take the time off, I love nothing more than hang out with you guys. Will you, will you introduce me to Hank personally? I know you got the hookup. I, I like Hank Strange quite a bit, man. Of course, I want to meet you, obviously, face to face, but if you can introduce me to um, Hank and, and, and Tyvin and some of those kind of guys that I've been following for a long time, that would be awesome, so... Yes, Richard Hughes, if you can get me in. I don't I don't have the hookup. I'm not big enough to get the invite. Oh, there you go. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, I do want to go. I just have to have a little notice because I'm self-employed. I can schedule the time off, but I can't call off. And there is a big difference. If I call off, I lose my business. But I can schedule everybody, you know, work really hard before, work really hard to catch up after. But yeah, I definitely want to go. Oh, let's see here. You know, it's tough, guys. You guys are bringing up some things. You know, the there are some good, <laughs> there are some good ones. Will, just go with the um. I don't even know if Will's still in here. Hopefully, you are, man. But even if he's not, that's fine. Hopefully, this whole discussion helps somebody else, and it let me totally rip on a despicable company that. Uh, uh, I'm so mad, guys. You guys know I have the HS2000, right? Like, I really like these. 
I really like these Croatian pistols. I really, really do. Um, let's see here, guys. I'm just taking a quick look. The chat's coming through pretty good, but I'm trying to catch up here. Okay, Will's still here. Right on, man. Right on. I think you might be good to go with the SIG, my man. I'm seeing some people in here that kind of know their stuff that are saying, you know, they seem to be good to go now. I think the, the first lemons, you know, the first lemons were kind of, they existed. We saw them on YouTube, right? But they, they kind of weeded it out a little bit. Yeah, well, just, just read all these guys in here. They know, they probably know more about guns than I do, most of these guys. So right on, man. Is there anybody in here I haven't said hi to? Uh, Paul Gonzi brings up a point. If you want a brand that won't be named and he used the acronym gun, get it you. It's not new. That's another option too from one of your buddies or something. I've had them a long time, guys. I still have some of them. You know what I mean? Just don't, just don't want to – do not want to be a salesman. And I will say this, guys. Show just does bring up a good point. The customer service is going to be a little better with SIG. But I but I really like my little Tauruses, though. I really, really do. I really, really do. This holster is good, guys. It really, really is. I'm really happy. I'd never buy a holster from a, from a big box store again. Heck no. Pinky dangle guns. Um, well, what have we got here? Well, it's a pinky dangle gun, unless you want to add on, you know. Well, hold on. I, I've got a little pinky dangle gun here. Not really, though. It needs to stop freaking raining, guys. Like, it's raining like crazy. And then the two days it hasn't rained in the last week, I'm still trying to get these last couple pesky fall cleanups done, but. Stupid as it sounds, but this curve, curve, <laughs> boy, that was a blonde moment. This spectrum, the curve's another one too, but I don't think they make that anymore. With this spectrum, it's weird. That recessed back pinky thing that's really weird and it sticks like, this is kind of unconventional. It just feels good, guys. It, it really actually does. Like if you go to make a fist, doesn't your... You know, your pinky kind of wants to come in a little bit tighter. You know what I mean? This is this is nice. I hope this thing isn't a turd. I really, really hope this is good. A lot of you guys have told me you have these and you recommend. I, I hope to God because this thing is so ergonomic. I mean, it really, really is. So I, I hope it works out. I really do. And I just bought another type of ammo for this just because people have said, I don't know. I'll conclude this with my own test. People have said, look, some of these have primer issues, sensitive to hard primers, etc." I just showed you guys in that G2C project video recently, two videos ago, right? That I bought a wide array of ammo and I just grabbed some of this right here. Just grabbed a box of Fagil. So this is kind of a good control for me. Is this the best ammo ever? No. But it's really good too, right? Like I've I've never had a problem with, you know, fragile ammunition, really. So I bought a just regular old brass 380. That way, if it doesn't fire the gecko, I can say, well, maybe that's because it's European, and European ammo can have harder primers, right? The Aguila, well, that's a foreign ammo too, made in Mexico. Some, most, many, I should say, foreign manufacturers of ammo put a little harder primer in their pistol. So I got a good old box of. Just regular old American made right there. American made. This is a good thing. Federal ammo. That'll be kind of the control. So. I'm going to run some rounds through the um, spectrum. If it runs everything good, I'm going to run the dog crap out of it. And if it's still going good, then I'm going to probably put it in my pocket because it's more ergonomic than... My little Caltech P380. I'm carrying this little girl because I've had it for years, and it goes bang every time. Your results may vary, but this has been a great little gun for me. 
not quite as comfortable as the Spectrum, though. So we'll see. We'll see what happens here. I'm kind of a tried and true guy. It's going to take a lot for me to switch it up, but I kind of really hope this works out. You guys know what I'm saying? Um, let's see here. We have uh, Pure Essence in the house. How's it going? Do the G2C triggers work in the G3? No, and here's why. Because many of the aftermarket triggers, and I'll tell you why, many of the aftermarket triggers, they get rid of the blade safety, right? Well, if you look at, go back to my Taurus playlist. This will answer the rest of the question. I show a side-by-side. -side. I say, why is the trigger better on the G3 than the G2C? I think that's the name of it. You'll see it in my, I'm starting to say famous Taurus playlist because I'm always referencing it because I've, I've purposely been building this playlist to try to help Taurus owners out where each video is building on the next one. So when people say, when people see my, what's the difference between the G2C and G3, which one should you buy? Then they immediately say, can you put the four inch barrel on the G2C? And I say, just go right back to the Taurus playlist. That video has been done. So if you go back to my own um, playlist, Pure Essence, you'll see where I'm showing you exactly how the blade safeties interact with the frame. And if you think about it from that perspective, you're going to have to modify the frame of your G2C, which will no doubt void your warranty. Will it even work after you do all that? I don't know. I haven't done it yet. I haven't tried, but you'll see that that video will do better than I could explain right now. But the answer is that that's why the aftermarket ones work because most of the time the, the, the Asman from Galloway, the keep tinkering that I've been hearing about those get rid of the blade safety. So hopefully that helps you, but that is a good question. And I'm glad you asked it here because that question has been asked like, um, 364 times in the last like two weeks. So, if you guys could pardon me real quick, I'm adding another video idea to my list. So, I really appreciate the question, Pure Essence, because you reminded me I should probably do a video explaining what I just said. What do you think? G3 trigger and G2C. And with this G2C project I'm working on, I've been getting some support. Just a few more people want to chip in. We can make this happen, if you're interested in it, by the way. If you think you'll get some value or you think this channel or this series is a worthy cause, whatever. You guys know what I'm saying. So I'm getting close to being able to make this project to go, I think. I think I'm going to do it. And I'm going to be trying a couple of these aftermarket triggers. So we can really start talking about it more and more. That's why I'm having so much fun, you know, going through everything with the, you know, you got the G2C, the G2S, the G3. You know, there's, there's kind of some stuff that'll intermix, right? I've already done the one showing you guys the G3 barrel and the G2C. People have been asking me lately, hey, can you shoot the G3 magazines in the G2C? Well, heck yeah, you can. And they're like completely awesome. Like they work perfect, way better than the Sig mags. And that's another video that I need to write down. See, I'm refreshing my own memory here. Let's see here. P226 mags versus G3 mags. Okay, I'm not gonna bore you guys, but there's a whole there's a whole video on that that'll probably be you know informative or whatever for you guys. Definitely, definitely gonna do that one. But people just keep asking me, can you shoot it in there? Well, yeah, I already did a video on it. And I actually have one, you know, shooting the defensive ammo, the hollow point from the G3. And I'll give you guys a sneak preview. I did a video, I recorded it a couple weeks ago, but I haven't posted it. I actually have already posted right now shooting ball rounds out of the G2C with the G3 mags. I have footage of me shooting hollow point federal HST from the G3 mags in the G2C. So this is for someone saying, hey, is this just a range you know, mag or is this mag going to reliably feed defensive ammo if I want to conceal carry or home protection carry my G3? Well, that video is coming out in just a few days, guys. So there you go. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the results were. Right, Shojus? Because then Shojus won't come back and watch. Shojus will come back either way, probably. But you guys know what I'm saying. Tactical review. Tactical review is not going to come out, okay? Um, Where'd the comment go? Just so you guys know this. Thanks, Tactical, for bringing that up. Look, I try to answer every question. I love you guys' questions, and I love answering them when you leave them in the comments of my videos. 
Okay, there's two things that happen. If you leave any kind of URL on it, YouTube's going to put it right off into what they call YouTube jail. I can still see it, but I have to go into this weird spot that I don't often go to find it. So if you're putting a URL in, now here's how stupid it is. Some guy ended his sentence with like, do. He was trying to say do it as part of his sentence. He put do, and then he must have like messed up with his keypad and put dot it. Clearly not a website. Yeah, if you accidentally put a period in between two words, they can think it's a URL. They kick it off into what I call YouTube comment jail. I don't see it unless I'm like looking around in the back menus that I don't normally go to on my channel. So that may be one reason why I haven't responded. Another time, I saw this guy's comment come through and I was like, ooh, I really like that comment. I definitely want to give him an answer. And I don't even know if he's in here. Uh, Gunny. Gunny's one of the coolest guys I've met. And I saw, if you're in here, man, I saw your comment come through. It was Thanksgiving and I'm like, I'm totally going to answer him. But like after I'm done with dinner with the family and I looked forward to answering it, I went back to find it. It's gone. Sometimes YouTube just randomly grabs a, like, like you're out in the country in the cornfields, you know, and this UFO just comes down and like grabs somebody and their dog and takes them away. The YouTube comment UFO will come down once in a while and just literally take your comment, take it away. I can't see it. I can never find it again, but I saw it flash on my phone and had read it. So if I ever don't answer your comment, it's due to one of three reasons. Those two. And the third reason is if someone leaves me a completely jerk off comment, I respect your freedom of speech. It's totally fine. I leave it up, but I just don't answer. Like I'm not going to answer like millions of people will shed blood in the street because you're showing this video of this Torah spectrum. You know what? God bless. Have a nice day. I'm not going to answer stupid, retarded stuff, but yeah. If you guys ever think like, man, why did he blow me off on the question? Well, you put a URL in it, either on purpose or accidentally, or um, the UFO just came and grabbed it. And it, Yeah. I can't think of any other explanation than that. They just do it. And like this guy, you know, he goes by Gunny on here. You guys remember seeing him last week? The dude's cool as heck. He took the time to leave me like this, like 10 sentence comment. And it was a really heartfelt comment. And I like really, it was a thought provoking con comment that I'm glad he left. And I wanted to answer him. It's just gone. I just can't find it. <laughs> Gets me a little bit frustrated how, how they can just disappear. Okay. Tactical review had it, um, had it abducted just like that. So there you go. Plenty of 40 millimeters from um, the police. You guys are having a 40 talk? That's good. They have switched away from 40 recently. Most cops. Now, not all. It's going to take a decade or more before they completely go back to nine. But 357 SIG was used in a lot of police forces. You know, I've got a, um, I got a 40 caliber here. As people call the old Glock 40. Now, Glock 40 is another actually gun that's not chambered in 40 Smith & Wesson. But this is a Glock 22. And now the Glock 22 is not chambered in 22. Why does Glock have to do this, guys? And the Glock 17, just for tactical review. I'm going to teach you here something, okay? Tactical review. The Glock 17, my man, is not chambered in 17 HMR. I know you thought it was, but it's just not, man. So I have to set you straight. You know what's happened is poor conservative's not in here to take one for the team. He had to run, and now I'm picking on Tactical Review. But shout out to the Tactical Review channel. Go over there, subscribe to Tactical Review, and then your first comment can be, dude, the Glock 17 doesn't shoot 17 HMR. Then it'll make it all worth it. Rockford Ordnance, speaking of good channels, what's happening, man? I left a comment on your very beautiful Folding stock RPK build. Nice, 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 man. Good video. I listened to the whole entire thing. Listened and watched, you know. My kit's still in the back room right over there. So I'm kind of jealous that you actually built your kit. But I have one too. One of these days, I'll build mine out. So yeah, Rockford Ordnance. Ooh, 40 is better than nine, period. End of story. Whistling. Ooh, we're going to start a 40. Oh, speak of the devil. Come on, guys. How did you guys let him come back in here? Just as I said, poor conservative's not here. I'm going to rip on tactical review instead. 
poor conservative just strolls right through the door and 40 rules, nine rules. Now, here's where we're going to get poor conservative. Okay. Hold on a second. Just give me two seconds, guys. Let, let poor conservative revel in his 40, Cal. Okay, okay. Poor conservative. Poor conservative had his moment in the sun. Now, he says 40, 40 rules and nine rules until he runs across this Glock 22. It's not in 40, but indeed in 357 SIG, which is has been duly noted by various YouTubers over the years, is technically a nine mil. But here's the problem poor conservative has. Okay? Poor conservative is going to throw, you know, 180 grains down range. He's going to get her out of there at about, yeah, let's give him 1,100, 1,150 foot per second. Then this 9 mil comes along. This 9 mil is going to be getting out of there at 1,550 at, let's just say, about 125 grains. So there you go. So let's see here. 40 is greater than 9, and then 9 all of a sudden becomes greater than 40. And trust me, guys. Poor conservative is my friend, and I hope when we're good enough friends where I can get by with this. But now, 357 segs another great caliber, guys. It really is. And I'm I look, I'm not literally an ammo encyclopedia, but I don't think I was that far off. It's pretty easy to chuck, you know, 125 grain pill out of here at well over 1500 foot per second. And I know somebody in this chat right now that gets a little 65 grain or light for caliber out of his at well over 2,000 foot per second, so. Ooh. Glock a doodle do. See, see? Uh, we're still friends. Aren't we poor conservative? I mean, I hope we're still friends. I mean, we're, all right, all right. We live a couple hundred miles apart. We'll, we'll be friends again tomorrow, all right? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. All right. Aunt Diesel's in the house. What's happening? 45 beats both. It kills souls. Shout out to Aunt Diesel. 45 for you, sir. Why a 45? Because they don't make a 46. I mean, that was the same back in the day. I mean, now they make a 46, but... And now they make a 45 super, but yeah. 45. Shout out to Aunt Diesel in the house. Um, Freddie F. What's happening, Freddie? Freddie says, I like turtles. All right. Turtles are pretty cool. Do you mean actual, like, turtles? Turtles? We have a turtle in my pond at home, a little painted turtle. He's actually a pretty cool little dude. Like, you can give him lunch meat. He'll swim right up and grab it right out of your hand. So, yeah. Heck yeah, man. Um, pure essence. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I've got going on here. Okay? I've got the, the 40 barrel, the 9 barrel, and the 357 SIG. And when I'm shooting nine, I do actually switch out the mags. But as you guys know, for 40 and 357, since 40 is the parent case for 357 SIG, you're obviously not going to have to um, switch out anything but literally the barrel. Because basically your Glock 22 and your Glock 31, same gun, same mags, you're good to go. I will say, though, I have shot 9 millimeter out of a 40 mag in this exact pistol, and it was fine. But there's a little bit of wiggle in the round in the mag, you know? So yeah, probably now some people say you should change your ejector. Okay. Things like that. I usually just run nine mags, nine millimeter conversion barrel. Good to go. Then with the 357 SIG or the 40, I'm running 40 mags. Not that I wouldn't run a Glock, you know, 31 magazine, but I don't really see those. I can get these 40 Cal mags cheap. A lot of times online, you know, military, not military, but Leo surplus trade-ins. So, yeah, there you go. If you can get something up going, you know, more than 2,000 foot per second, you're probably going to defeat body armor. I mean, well, soft armor, not all body armor. You could probably defeat, you know, level 3, 3A, I would assume, once you're getting up over 2,000. Um, show just whatever caliber can lay down the bad guy is a good one with me. There you go. I couldn't have said it better, actually. Okay. Jorge Vargas is saying for this cool weather, we could get by with a Glock 20. 
What's the Glock 20 again, guys? I'm trying to remember. Is that the Big Ten? No, that's the Big Ten millimeter, isn't it? Yeah. Depending on your hand size, you guys are bringing up a good point. Well, look, there's a reason they make more than one model of pistol, right? If there was the one that fit everybody perfectly, we'd just have one gun. And I'd come on here and I'd say, hey, guys, welcome to the One Gun Podcast. Today we will show our one gun. This is the best gun. It's the best gun you've ever seen. Quite frankly, it's better than any gun you've ever never heard of that up until now they didn't even think was possible because it is the best and it is the only. So, yeah, good thing we have more than one gun because that stream wouldn't be fun. And, and Jeremy Wilson didn't say I was allowed to do um, Trump impressions. That's why I didn't do the voice, but. Oh, 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 okay. Freddy F. I totally get it, man. I'm sorry. I I'm sitting there. Uh. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, he's saying basically I like turtles as attempt to end a pissing contest. If you can hit dead on, who cares about the caliber? Exactly. But just so you I think you knew this, Freddy. But anyone else in here? Look, poor conservative's a buddy of mine. He's he's a friend of mine. Me doing that with him was literally me picking on poor conservative only. It had nothing to do with the calibers. I like pretty much all calibers. I don't think I've really met a caliber I don't like. So <laughs> just to make that clear, if anyone's kind of, you know, I think Freddie knew that's what I was doing. But for anybody else, that was literally me messing with poor conservative. Like that's all it was. Um, Let's see here. Oh, Jeremy Wilson. God bless your wife, man. I'm going to keep praying for her. That, that really, really sucks. If you guys are the praying type, you know, pray for Jeremy Wilson's wife. She's had a she's had a real, real rough go, you know. She's had some advanced medical procedures, and she's just not healing the way they would hope and they would like. So God bless you and your family, Jeremy. Man, that sucks. M4 Johnny's in the house. What's happening, M4? How you doing, buddy? You know what? We were talking about um, ARs, you know, stoners. Hold on a minute. I'm going to get back on poor conservative's good side now. I'm going to try to get back on his good side. It's not easy to do. He's kind of a crabby old man, but we'll try to get back on his good side. Speaking of calibers, I like, I like some different calibers in my ARs. This is my little 300 blackout rig. For anyone with M4 or Stoner in their name, I feel bad now. Eugene Stoner was in here earlier, and I told him I'd show him an AR. I don't know if he's still in here, but here's a nice little one that it's a blast to shoot. Do any of you guys use these uh, CAC cans? This is like a blast forwarder. I pretty much like it a lot. Now, I've never been on the other end of it. If you're, like, standing in front of it, which you don't want, right? But I don't know if I want to be on the other end, per se, but, man. And really, for the shooter, it's actually really, really nice. Okay. Yeah, PSA makes some versions of it. Um, who was saying that? I saw that out of the corner of my eye. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Palmetto definitely makes a version of this. That was tactical review. Yeah, these are these are pretty cool. This is kind of a lightweight rig. I've got it all loaded up with the 300 black. There's a bunch of different braces available, but I use the SBA-3. I like it. But I've got the CAC Shockwave Blade. To me, it has a nice degree of, you know, bracing. It's pretty sturdy. I don't mind this blade. Got some flip-up sights. I've got the Spark AR on top of it. The Vortex Spark AR. Not the best red dot ever, but for my kind of budget, it's it's a pretty nice one. Lightweight m -lock rail. This is one of the Mag Tactical lowers, by the way. I don't know if you guys remember Mag Tactical. I think they've been purchased since then by another company. I'm trying to remember who bought them, but this is one of the original, you know, magnesium alloy. Lightweight. Yeah. You know, I mean... People say, well, look, why not just get 7.62 by 39? You guys know that I love 7.62 by 39, but 
there is still a reason for this caliber, guys. First of all, once you get out over certain distances, this round does have a better, you know, BC, ballistic coefficiency than 762 by 39. Now, at shorter ranges, no, it doesn't matter. But at a little bit longer ranges, it's just true. And second of all, what's cool about this round is you can just run it in a regular old AR mag that, that sticks straight out from the gun, right? So I'm not saying that, I, you know, 300 is better than 762 by 39. Look, I shoot like a thousand times more 762 by 39 than I do 300 black. But, you know, I don't think it's fair to say that like, you know, the 300 shouldn't exist, right? It has a better BC than 762 by 39. You can put it in a regular old fashioned AR mag. Okay. And if you're into, you know, suppressing, you can silence it much better, right? So there you go. There's a lot more subsonic loadings and for the 300 Whisper, and now that's kind of gotten taken over by the 300 AAC. But, yeah. I like this little rig. I really do. Stainless barrel. So, yeah, for all you AR guys. All right, I've been on two hours. I'm going to be wrapping it up here in just a minute. Let me take a one last look at the chat here. Josh Benware is in the house. What's happening, Josh? Just about ready to be signing off here, but I'm glad you joined us, man. Uh, okay, Ant Diesel Vision saying check out his 300 blackout on his channel. All right, go check it out, guys. Sounds like he's got a nice little 300 blackout rig he wants to show you, so definitely go over there. Um, let's see here. Gunsquark44. Have you been in here for a while? No, I, I saw you in here earlier. How's it going again, man? I guess you were gone for just a little bit there. Oh, Gunsquark wouldn't mind seeing a little bit of the Trump impression. So what, um, <laughs> and Jeremy Wilson. All right, guys, maybe in a second. Yeah, I'm getting ready to end. I mean, I've been on for two hours and five minutes, so. The ultimate build. That's a good question. You know what? I've actually had people asking me lately in some of the comments on the, um, the videos, you know, hey, man, do you want to do a video on like an AR build? I could do that. AK build. And I think like Tactical Review said, Maybe I just need to know a little bit more. Do you want it to be a pistol? Do you want it to be a carbine? Do you want it to be a full rifle? You know what I'm saying? So it, it just kind of depends on the, um, you know what I'm saying? Just taking a real quick peek here back up in the chat. Um. Okay, Rockford Ordnance just built a pistol with the um, with the CAC. Yeah, the CAC's pretty nice, you know. There, there's some really cool braces out there, guys. What about that um pistol storage device? Is anybody using that? I actually have one right over there that I haven't done anything with yet. I kind of bought one because I thought they were neat, and I want to put it on a build. I'm just not exactly sure. Are you guys um familiar with that? The PSD, I think it's called pistol storage device, right? Let me see. I think it's right over here. Yeah, there we go. Any of you guys using this one? What I thought was cool about this, and God forbid this ever happens, I don't even want to say it out loud, but if they were ever to, you know, get rid of braces or interpretations or rulings or whatever, this is not a brace. So... Don't know if that would really do you much good or not, but if there was ever a thing where braces went by the wayside, like how bump stocks did, you know, a legal executive action fiat that completely and utterly contradicts current law and the Second Amendment and everything else and due process and the takings clause, and I could go on for an hour. If they do that times two, which they probably will eventually because the bump stock ban was so easy, but I digress. 
this is actually not considered a brace. So I thought that was kind of a, a neat little thing, right? It's just designed to simply hold one of your um, magazines, a couple pistol mags or one rifle mag. So that's that's its quote intended use. Let me know if you guys have one of these or whatever. Kind of looks pretty cool. Um, let's see here. Oh, the flash cans, Rockford Ordnance. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, the flash cans are pretty cool. Definitely, definitely. It diverts the blast, you know, forward, right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, just taking one more look at the chat here, guys. Bastard's in the house. Better late than never. Oh, man, I'm just getting ready to sign off here, actually. They will ban this by name. Well, maybe. So there you go. But but officially, though, it's not a brace, right? It's really not. Are you guys answering Freddie's question a little bit? It looks like you guys are talking about 762 by 39, 300 blackout. Yeah, you know, I've got AR and AK pistols in different calibers, but certainly, you know, you're going to get a little more out of a 30 cal with a pistol length barrel than you will a 556. That's just my opinion, right? And maybe ballistics would also stick up for what I'm saying there. There you go. Freddie said it best. The ultimate build is all up to personal preference. What do you find to be suited to your own personal needs? Yeah, that's actually probably, yeah, I agree with you. Because there's just so many. You know, you guys are talking about the little home defense guns. A lot of you guys like the, the small little, you know what I'm saying, compact rigs. Some people are going to want the long barrel. I mean, I've got a 6.5 Grendel that's like 12 and a half inch barrel. And then I also have a 24 inch 6.5 Grendel upper. So there you go. And that's all just within one caliber, right? Have a good weekend, Explicit. Matt Morrison, I'm not going to give away too much, but let's just say very soon, okay? On the AK-55 video, very soon. Like it might already be uploaded as we speak, if you know what I'm saying. Um, Just taking another peek here. <laughs> you guys are making some jokes about it. That's funny. <laughs> All right. If you guys have any last-minute questions, go ahead now because... It's going to be almost my bedtime. If I get caught out after midnight, I could turn into a pumpkin. Is that what it is? We don't want that to happen. I've got a few more videos to make still before that happens. So, No, Matt, you didn't miss anything. You didn't miss anything. It's still yet to come. So, A blumpkin. There you go, Mateo. That's what I'll turn into. All right, guys, so I'm hoping to get out to the range really soon so I can record some of these newer pistols that I've been doing reviews on in action. I've got a little more um, shooting footage still in the reserve here, so I can put out some more videos in the meantime on that. I already have my own list. You guys gave me some ideas to add to the list today, like five different things. I'll probably never get caught up with the list, but I do like hearing from you guys as far as what you're going to – um. You know, what you guys would like to see because that's kind of why I do the channel. If I wasn't worried about what you guys like to see, I guess I would just sit here and talk about guns to myself, right? But that wouldn't be too much fun. So I appreciate all the super chats tonight, the new Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. Definitely going to put the money right back into the channel for more content and just makes it where I can do a few more, um, a few more cool things, you know? That I wouldn't be able to afford to do totally on my own. So you guys are awesome. Um, let's see here. All right, guys. I'm going to get off here. If you guys miss most of the stream and you're really bored later at work this week or whatever, you'll be able to go back and watch it. For the first 30 minutes or so, YouTube's not going to render the whole thing. But we're at 2 hours and 12 minutes. It'll all end up there after they go through and do their thing. So. All right. Good night, guys. I appreciate hanging out with you guys, and hopefully all your Thanksgiving was good, and I will see you guys soon. All right. Thanks for watching.
and have a good one.